All right, so this video is the continuation of my current ongoing training series. A series where I share my current training splits and tell you what, why and how do I do a set few things. Now, I am not a fitness guru or a workout expert. I'm just a student of exercise science and training. And this is just the way of I showing my interest, passion and believe in the same. So just like the style, grooming and social wellness videos on this channel, take this video or treat this video with a grain. Of sort. And before you watch this video or start seeing the whole series, be sure or be mindful of the fact that this is not a beginner's training split. This is for someone who is intermediate or advanced. This is for someone who has been lifting for at least a set few years. Now, if you want, I can obviously make a beginner's workout split, a beginner's workout training schedule the upcoming month in the month of March. But for now, for this month and for the upcoming videos on this series, it will be all about my personal workouts and my current training split to be a stronger, better version of myself. So, in case you haven't watched the previous two workout videos in this series, a series where I shared my leg workout and my back workout, you can watch it by clicking the index card right there. Anyway, in this fitness video, in this workout video, gentlemen, I'll be walking you through a part one, through the part one of my push workout day or my chest workout day in specific. So, my name is Mayank Bhattacharya. This is Men's Essentials. Let's go. Okay, so two quick things before I get into the video. No, this is not my Instagram shout out. These are two genuine good things. One, I don't like to train a separate body part every different days of the week. So how I like to train or how I like to schedule my training is train all the pull muscles in a given day, train all the push muscles in a given day, but start the week with the mighty legs. Now this would mean that I'll train my rear delts and my traps with my back because everything on the posterior chain is something that I'm training on one given day. The same rule applies to my push day. Everything on the anterior chain is trained on that given day. So when I'm training my chest, I'm not only training my chest, I'm training my chest with my shoulders. The same applies to the leg days as well. I train my entire lower body. I don't have different splits between my calves and my hamstrings and my quads. My lower body is my lower body day. I'll squats, I'll do calf races, I'll do deadlifts, stiff legged -like deadlifts and all of that to train my lower body in that given day. And the fourth day, the last day of the week is basically for my arms and abs. Now, I haven't really trained arms and abs ever in my life because I never felt the need to, but now I have just started to train it. So I have given it a whole new day to just be that more aesthetically pleasing guy or whatever it be. See, the idea here, the goal here, however, is to just train four days a week, weight train four days a week and then do some sort of aerobic or cardiovascular exercises, do some active rest and recovery in the remaining three days. I can go out and run, I can do swimming and do all that things in the remaining three days. But I'm in the gym, weight training only four days in a week. I have tried doing different splits, I have tried doing different routines, but nothing really worked for me because I'm the super ectomorph guy. And if there is anything that I don't want from my weight training is terrible borderline overtraining. And eye training every day or eye training my specific body part each day is borderline overtraining for me. So this is how I like to structure, this is how I like to train. That being clear, that being said, let's just get into the push or the chest workout. Okay, so the very first thing that I'll do prior any workouts or prior any exercises is warm this body up. I'll get on a treadmill, I'll get on a cardiovascular machine. It could be a treadmill, it could be a bike, it could be an elliptical machine, any cardiovascular machine and I'll warm up for five minutes. Only five minutes, just some active warm up at a minimal pace so that my body can start pumping the blood and I can feel warm and ready enough for the mighty weight training. But once I'm done with the cardio, once I'm done warming up my body for five minutes, I'll directly not jump into a workout. I will want to warm up my shoulders, bones and all these joints and bolts in my body. What you can see me do here is take a PVC pipe and just warm up my shoulders nice and slow. Following that, you can see me take a dumbbell and warm up my rotator cuff muscles. Now rotator cuff is something that most people neglect and most people ignore. Gentlemen, your rotator cuffs are very small but very important muscle in your body. They are the most important muscle in your upper body. I mean, if you screw up your rotator cuffs, you are done and you're done for good. So don't take these things lightly. Don't take your ball and socket joint so lightly. Don't treat it so easy. Warm it up nice and good. Train it with your chest day. Train it with your back day whenever you want. And make sure they are nice and warm before doing any heavy lifting. So for now we are done with our cardio warm up, we are done with our dynamic stretching, we are done with our rotator cuff warm up. So we'll get into the main lifting exercises. But this does not mean that I'll jump on with the 80 pound dumbbell and start doing some bench press. There is a way, there is a process. I'll start up with a few very basic lightweight warm up 
sets. I'll do around three warm-up sets and then I'll follow it up with two prep sets or preparatory sets if that's what you like to say. Now for my current chest workout routine, I like to start things with a decline dumbbell bench press. Dumbbell because dumbbell is a whole lot more isolateral than the bar bilateral. I mean if you don't know the difference between isolateral and bilateral, it's quite easy to explain actually. Isolateral meaning you're using one limb, one arm or one leg at a time. Bilateral meaning you're using both your limbs, both your arms or both your legs at a time. It's easy, it's effective and it works. So when I'm not training for powerlifting, when I'm not training for a set specific powerlifting meet or for a set specific bench PR, I like to train or I like to alternate my decline with my flat bench press. So what I'll do now is I'll take some lightweight dumbbells, around 25-30 pound dumbbells. I'll warm up with three sets of that. I'll progressively overload the weight. I'll go from 30 pound to 40 pound to 50 pound to 60 pound dumbbells. And then once I'm done with that, once I'm done with my three warm up sets, once I'm done with my two preparatory sets, I get into my main lifting set. Three sets for around five to eight reps. Now these repetitions may look or may seem very low to you, but these are my perfect range. This is my perfect number because I am not, I do not train for size. I rather train for strength and endurance. So I really want to be strong. Size and muscle is just a byproduct of high training to be strong. I mean, in case you weren't aware, there is a reason I look a certain way and there is a reason I can lift two and a half, three times more body weight than my own self. This is how I like to train, this is how I like to structure. And that's one reason I'm always so interested and intrigued to go to the gym because this is something very entertaining to me. So you have to find your own needs. If you're someone who's hardcore into bodybuilding, these rep schemes might not work well with your needs or with your body frame or with your own body needs. So you have to figure out that thing by yourself or you have to hire a trainer for it. But for my needs, for my goal of trying to be the strongest guy around, I have to train a certain way to be a genuine power lifter. Decline dumbbell bench press, five to eight reps, three sets, and then moving on. Okay, so next up on the list, next exercise on the list is probably the most constant chest exercise I have done till date, till the time I got decent with lifting. That's incline dumbbell bench press. Like I had this different machine when I was working out in a previous gym, which was a K11 certified gym. So they had this machine where I could isolaterally press the incline with a whole lot more weights on each side. But these machines aren't there in today's gym so I'm not able to find that machine in any of these fancy gyms these days so I'll have to use dumbbells and what I'll try to do is I like to focus more on the isolateral movement here and just press one rep and one range and one limp at a time. Now this or doing only one isolateral movement at a time is not only engaging my core a whole lot more but it is also helping my shoulder stabilize my body and train itself to be a whole lot more stabilized structured frame. I mean I like it I haven't tried it before I just started doing it two three months back when I saw Jeff Cavalier from Athlean Next talk about it in case you don't know who Jeff Cavalier is. In case you haven't watched any videos by Athlean Next, check it out. Probably one of the best fitness channels out there in this world. So for this, I'll do a similar thing just like the decline dumbbell bench press. The only thing that I skipped here was a warm up or was a prep set because my shoulders and my pectorials are already warmed up with all that decline benching and warming up with the dynamic stretching and all that good thing. So what I'll do here, the only thing that I'll do here is do three main sets of five to eight reps. Once I'm done with that, I'll move on to my final exercise, my final workout of the day for the chest, obviously. And that will be the flat cable flies or cable crossovers in this case. You can see my torso is flat parallel to the floor. I'm not trying to hitch my low back. I'm not trying to add any extra momentum. I'm not trying to load too heavy because I don't want my form to be compromised on this particular exercise. And yes, for this case, in this exercise, I'm doing around eight to 12 reps. Now, why so many reps in this exercise, you ask? Well, because it's a machine and I'll be stupid to use super low weights or go super heavy on a freaking machine. I like to go heavy on free weights when it comes to dumbbells and barbells, not on a machine. I'm not a fan of that. I have screwed up my shoulders a whole lot more time going super heavy on a machine. So I would not recommend you try it either. Do this for volume. Do this to get some stretch. Do this to get some size. 10 to 12 reps, four sets and we are done with our chest workout. Three exercises, but I'm not done for the day. I'll have to go train my shoulders as well but shoulders is not a part of this workout video because i want you to instill some patience and wait for it the next week so if you want to watch the shoulders workout do let me know that we want it early then i'll try making it by the weekend or you can come back next week and see what i do in my shoulders workout followed by this amazing chest routine now this is something that i'll be doing till the march end and then i'll change things up again because i'll be training for a lot of strength, a lot of heavy powerlifting strength starting April to the end of June. So yeah, if you want to watch all of these good things, you can check out my Instagram. If you want to watch my shoulders workout right now, actually, you can watch it all on my Instagram. You can go to the story section and click training there. You can see my shoulders workout and all the other workouts that I do on a daily basis. But for now, 
this is where I'll end this video. This is where I'll conclude this video. I hope you all find it helpful. I hope this was well worth your time. Gentlemen, my name is Mangra Sara. Thanks a lot for watching. You don't forget to dress up, stay strong, and stay stylish. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.